Hey guys, this is going to be one of my uh, stream of consciousness videos. I was having lots of downloads in the shower and I just kept getting pressed by my inner being to share. So here we go. So it's all around Pluto and themes of power, what defines power, right use of power. Um, for any other Gemini risings out there, we are completing a 16 and a half year transit of Pluto through our eighth house. So basically the ruler of the underworld is uh, transiting through our personal underworld. <laughs> And I know for me, the themes of power dynamics and right use of power in relationships, business partnerships, um, every single area of life was under review. And I was born with Pluto retrograde. So I have, um, you know, some things to redo in this lifetime in regards to power and all of those were brought up. <laughs> I also have Venus there, so, you know, a lot of mine were themes of, of power dynamics in relationships. So, some things that were coming up for me or some questions that I wanted to share with you guys because they're really good questions to ask to see if you're learning your Pluto lessons are, number one, how do I treat people who I perceive, there's the key word, who I perceive to have less power than me? And that can be in literally every single area of your life. So that can be if you have employees, if you have children, if you have uh, some knowledge, you know, because knowledge is power. If you have knowledge that gives you some sort of advantage or you believe it gives you an advantage over other people, how do you use that? Um, it can be, um, of course, in, in any kind of, you know, sexual relationship or, or any kind of uh, relationship dynamic. You know, how do you treat your partner if you perceive that they have less power than you? The first thing, I guess, before that would even be to see, do I measure people that way? <laughs> like, am I always keeping an eye out for who has more power than me, less power than me? Because that will tell you right there if you have some Pluto themes to work out in this lifetime. This is my opinion, of course, and just what I know about the energy after working with it for 16 and a half years now. <laughs> um, so just take what resonates, obviously. I, I, my intention is just to share um, what I've learned over this time period. It's coming up to a close in January as it moves fin finally into Aquarius and stays there. This goes all the way from the top down too. If you live in the United States, we are finishing our United States Pluto return. So when the United States was founded, there's a birth chart that can be run for that. And in that birth chart from 1776, Pluto was in Capricorn. It takes 248 years to go around the sun. So we are, you know, finishing this time of Pluto return. And if you have, you know, eyes to see, I don't even think you have to have any sort of special eyes to see that power has been abused um, in our government power has been abused in our corporations, power has been abused in every single system in this country, and it's all up for review. And there's going to be a, a huge change. Pluto goes into Aquarius. That's power to the people, baby. <laughs> and Pluto in Capricorn is power to the hierarchy, power to the, um, you know, ones at the top who put themselves at the top or, or, you know, by generational legacy got these positions of power, but they have not been having right use of power. So that's all up for correction, all the way from the top, all the way down to the bottom. 
because we as individuals do it, you know, and I had several experiences over this 16 years where I had to check myself and say, how am I using power incorrectly? And what can I do to turn that around? And because of that, I have a keen eye for when people are trying to use power over me. And you don't always need to say it when you see it happening, right? Because part of that is, is most likely, you know, that person's lesson. And, you know, you can give opportunities for, uh, to see if they'll correct the behavior on your own. Obviously don't stay in any sort of like dangerous situation, but a lot of this can be very subtle, right? It can be very, very subtle. And so the best way though, to be able to spot it is to spot it first in yourself to examine every aspect of your life where that any sort of power dynamic exists. You know, any anything, like for instance, I left a career, you know, I have a master's degree and I clean houses now and I do deliveries. And so it's been awesome and amazing to see how people treat me thinking I'm like a lowly housekeeper or whatever. Some people are amazing. You know, they don't treat me any different than if I was in my other position that I left. Um, and then some people get, get a fucking kick out of having a servant or whatever, you know? And those are probably people I had to clear past life karma. This whole slave master dynamic that is in our collective unconscious, a lot of us are here to correct that. You know, I probably had a lifetime even back when this country, before it was founded, when we were taking land and taking the lives of the natives. You know, I've been on both sides. I've been the slave and I've been the master. And I'm here to, to bring that neutrality. And the song that keeps coming to me this morning, and I'm gonna sing a little bit and y'all are gonna laugh, but um, a good way to keep yourself in check is to remember what Joan Osborne taught us in the 90s. What if God was one of us? <laughs> Just a slob like one of us. <laughs> Just a stranger on the bus trying to make their way home. <laughs> I'm tone deaf if you couldn't tell. But you get my point. Like, I think the Bible even says somewhere, like, you never know when you're entertaining angels unaware, right? So, golden rule. Golden rule. It's always back to the golden rule. Treat others how you want to be treated. Treat those that are the lowest among you the same as you would treat those that you perceive to be the highest among you. And that's how you keep your soul in alignment is by using the power, the God-given power that we each have not to lord over others but to empower, empower, to take that power within you and to plant that seed within somebody else so that they can rise in their own power. And that's what the Age of Aquarius is gonna be about. It's gonna be about everybody being empowered, not a few hoarding all of the resources, all of the money, all of the power, making the rules, that only benefit them, that only benefit a few, and that leave the rest with no power and therefore no ability to rise in their own life into their fullness, into their potential, to have opportunities. You know, there's a great reckoning coming. There is a great reckoning coming within each of us, an opportunity for course correction, 
and there is a great reckoning coming in this country. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't need to be scary. You know, it, it's, it's what, it's what's going to happen because balance has to be restored. I mean, the universe operates on balance and things have been way out of balance when it comes to power, power being allotted to systems, power being allotted to structures, governmental, uh, institutions, educational institutions, um, medical institutions, power has been unevenly distributed, power has been abused, and it's coming to a close. So the best way that you can participate and be on the right side of history is to get yourself in check with your own personal power to see how you are using that in your life, to elevate yourself and others, to contribute to the collective uprising, to the collective um, upliftment, and how you're using it to get ahead, personal gain, individual achievement, that sort of thing. Because all that's up for review. So those are your deep thoughts with Ellen for today. <laughs> I mean, I was in the shower and this stuff is just like rolling. It was just rolling through my head. Just thinking back to all these situations that I got to witness firsthand um, that I got to, and I say got to, because now looking back at the time I would have said, oh, like, what is going on? Why do I keep running into Pluto incarnated fucking everywhere I go, <laughs> you know? But it's because that is, that's what I'm here to do as a soul. Like that, these are big soul lessons, you know, for me personally, um, when it comes to clearing karma, when it comes to breaking these ancestral patterns, when it comes to breaking these generational curses, you know, and so now I say I get to, or I got to experience so many different power dynamics in every single area of my life, home, career, online world, just the, the general daily interactions with people. Um, I got to see them all through this lens of right use of power. So, that's all I got for today. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments. Would love to hear your thoughts. If you're a Gemini rising, I mean, I've even thought about starting a Gemini rising support group <laughs> to just to share and like talk about our experiences, you know, not from my therapy background as a licensed therapist, but more just from like a peer to peer freaking support group. Cause if you're Gemini rising, I can guarantee you have been through some power lessons in the past 16 and a half years. And, and for every other rising sign, you have too. But particularly, I know, because I know astrology, that Gemini risings have, have had their Pluto lessons. So, yeah, just any thoughts. I love feedback. You know, I enjoy hearing what you guys have to say. I hope this helped in some way or gave you something to think about or chew on um, as we approach, you know, January and Pluto moving into Aquarius for the next 40 years. No, not 40 years, 20 years. Let's see, it'll be 20, 25 to 2044. So almost 20 years. So big themes coming up and I hope y'all are doing well. I hope you're getting some time to take care of yourself and love on yourself, get out in nature. Here, I'll give y'all a little view. I just heard some fish jumping. Let's see what's over there. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, you guys, I love you. Talk to you soon. Bye.